Come on, Inc. <laughs> Genesis chapter 5. Then we'll start at verse 4. We got a problem right here. The Bible says, In the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were eight hundred years, and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were nine hundred and thirty years, and he died. So notice that Adam and Eve, they begat sons and daughters. And Adam and Eve, after they gave birth to these children, what happened? These children produced children as well. Verse 6, And Seth lived in 105 years and begat Enos. And Seth lived after he begat Enos 807 years and begat sons and daughters. Okay, how in the world did Seth, Adam's son, reproduce children unless he married one of his siblings from Adam and Eve? So that's a problem. But not only that, if you continue on from verses 8 through 32, you'll see that many people filled out the whole earth. And the only way you can do that is marry one of the members in your family. So that's a problem. Now, it's actually not difficult to debunk atheism. Here's the first thing, which is the easiest, and it's... The thing is, is that this has nothing to do with atheism, actually. So atheists, they could bring up this argument all they want, but that doesn't prove their point. You know why this doesn't prove atheism? Let me give a simple answer. Do you know what atheism means, the word atheism? So atheism or atheist, they are atheists, they are against God, right? They demand that no God exists. They demand that. Let me ask you a simple question. Does incest in the family prove that there is no God? Of course not. Let's assume that God, maybe he's not perfect, maybe he's not holy, and he allowed incest to happen. See, that doesn't prove that there's no God. There could be a God, an all-powerful God, who's not perfect, that allowed incest to happen. There you go. So how does that prove atheism? See, this argument about incest in the family doesn't prove, it does not prove that there is no God. How does that disprove God? That doesn't disprove God. So that's the easiest argument. I actually did that in visitation. And guess what? That argument works all the time almost. It works all the time. And then the atheist would jump to a different subject. He would say, yeah, there was incest. So, you know, why would the Bible have that? And I would say, how does that prove that there's no God? There could be a God who probably made that mistake and let those people do incest. Then they, get, then they jump to a different argument. That's the simplest way to handle it. So if you don't want to go back and forth with them, that's the easiest way to do it. Now, the second thing is this, is that obviously we have to address this issue. So the first thing is that this is totally irrelevant. That's the first point you can use. The second point that you can use is this, is that we have to address this matter. First of all, you got to understand this, is that why is it that atheists would whine about how God did these rules back then in the Bible, the culture of the Bible, but they would not argue about the culture of different nations. Here's the thing, is that atheists, aren't they all about relativity? So you got them right here. If atheists believe that morals are relative, do you know why they believe morals are relative? Because one of the key reasons why morals, right and wrong, is relative, it depends on culture. Here's the thing, is that who are they to say that those people in the family marrying each other is wrong? They can't argue that because they believe morals are relative depending on the culture. And guess what? In the culture of that time, they didn't think it's wrong. If you look, look, this is just common sense. If you look at thousands of years ago, different nations back then, they had some pretty weird rules and very strange practices. To us, we would think that's wrong. To us, we would think I would never do that. To us, we would think that's gross. But guess what? Those cultures and nations from thousands of years ago would say the same thing with you people today. All right? For example, you might, people today might say it's gross that there's incest in the family. But thousands of years ago, Adam and Seth would have said, ew, that's gross that two males are kissing each other. Yeah. I mean, morals are relative. Morals are relative, you know? So turn the tables on them on that one. 
See, they believe this. So if they believe this, you caught them again. You say, wait a minute, why are you using that argument? I thought morals are relative, depending on the culture. And the culture of that time, they didn't think it was wrong. You know why? You only had one man and one wife in the world. How else are you going to repopulate the whole world? Okay, you got no choice. So obviously in their mind, they think it's common sense. It's going to be common sense that we're going to have to interbreed with each other to repopulate the whole world. See, their thinking is different from you guys today. You guys today have so many people right now around this world. This is a kind of culture and environment that we live in. Obviously, you'd gross out if you marry your brother or your sister. So the thing is this, is that then you turn the tables on them. I thought you said morals are relative. The culture of that day was different. Here's a third point. The third point is this, is that do you know who's the one that dictates right and wrong? That's the key. Who's the one that created the laws of right and wrong? The lawgiver, right? Who is the lawgiver? Is it you or is it God? It's God. It doesn't become evil and wrong until God says so. You might say, oh, that's fair or that's unfair. It's not a matter of fair or unfair. It's a matter of legitimacy right there. Who has the legitimate right to say what's right and wrong? Is it you or God? It's God. By the way, it is fair that God would do it, not man. Do you know why? Here's the simple answer. Who would you trust? Let's be very honest here, okay? Mankind who's imperfect, who sinned, who's capable of abusing the power, who has sinned every single day, even the best Christian, at least sinned one time a day accidentally with the wrong thought or the wrong kind of word, are they more dependable man or is it God who's absolutely infallible and perfect? God. So who has the right to say this is right or this is wrong? Is it man or is it God? Let's be honest. God. That's how you debunk the atheist right here is that it's demands. That's why it proves even more there has to be a 100% holy God. A 100% perfect God exists. You have to believe in that. If you don't believe such a being exists, then you just proved atheism. There is no God right there. We have to demand absolute perfection, absolute holiness of a God. So if that's the kind of God you got, that kind of God has the right to dictate what's right and what's wrong. Because why? He knows past, present, future. Mankind doesn't. He, is in, he will never sin. It's impossible for him to sin. Man, it's definitely possible to sin. God he is all-knowing, omniscient. Mankind, he only knows partially, and an atheist will admit that too. We don't know, I don't know everything. And if he's an agnostic, he just admitted it even more. I don't know everything. So this is a crux of an argument that you use against atheism right here concerning this interbreeding going on. Because God has a right, not them. So you'll see right here that when the atheists bring up this argument about incest, it's actually the two easiest thing is this. The two easiest thing, that way you can catch them, is this. One, that doesn't prove, you just didn't prove that there is no God. That has nothing to do with atheism. Two, I thought you said morals are relative. It depends on the culture. And the culture of that time, they thought it was common sense because there was only two people in the world that time. And they thought, in order for us to fill the planet, we're just going to have to... Uh, marry each other. The third thing right here is that who are you to say what's right and wrong when you, when you sin every day? But God, he never sinned at all. And he's all-knowing.